हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ इज परमिंदर सिंह फ्रॉम प्रभ कृपा क्लासेस अवर टू डेज टॉपिक इज मास्टरिंग द मनी मल्टीप्लायर फ्रॉम मीनिंग टू मकैनिक्स आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू दिस कोर्स द स्टूडेंट्स विल अंडरस्टैंड वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ मनी मल्टीप्लायर एंड वट इज द रोल दो बैंक प्ले इन द मनी मल्टीप्लायर प्रोसेस वी विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड वट इज द फार्मूला टू कैलकुलेट द मनी मल्टीप्लायर द स्टूडेंट्स विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द एजम्पन्स विच आर एसोसिएटेड विद द मनी मल्टीप्लायर द स्टूडेंट्स विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड हाउ डज एन इंक्रीज इन रिजर्व रिक्वायरमेंट अफेक्ट द मनी मल्टीप्लायर और वट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन रिजर्व रेशो एंड मनी मल्टीप्लायर द स्टूडेंट्स विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड वट फैक्टर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द वेरिएशन इन द मनी मल्टीप्लायर एंड हाउ वी कैन कैलकुलेट द टोटल डिपोजिट क्रिएटेड वेन इनिशियल डिपोजिट एंड रिजर्व रेशो आर गिवन overall you will find this course very useful and informative and you will understand the concept and process of money multiplier in a very simple and easy language now the topic before us is money multiplier meaning we often have our account with some commercial bank we go to commercial bank and deposit some money with the bank whether the commercial bank keeps all the money we deposit with itself no the bank has to bear many expenses such as the expenses towards the salary of their staff maintenance of the building maintenance of the other infrastructure computers electricity expenses and so on so the banks cannot afford to have the money deposited by the customers with themselves they use the money deposited by the customers for the purpose of lending or investment suppose if a person deposits say 100 dollars whether the bank gives out all the money on loan no because the customers may approach the bank for withdrawal of money so the central bank in each and every country has declared it mandatory that some reserves must be kept to meet the cash withdrawal or other expenses which is called reserve requirement so after keeping the reserve requirement as mandated by the central bank the commercial bank gives the balance on loan when the loan is given to a person that person again uses that money for some investment or for buying of goods and services and ultimately that money again gets deposited in through the bank because from whom he buys the services or goods that person the other person again deposits the amount received in the bank and when the bank receives that money he again keeps some portion as reserves and gives the balance on lending so this process goes on so when suppose a person deposits say 100 dollars in the bank and after keeping the reserve ratio say 9 reserve ratio of 10% 90 dollars is given on loan 
so when this 90 dollars is spended by the borrower it again comes into the banking system and the other bank again gives it own loan so this process goes on so now the question arises how much money supply is increased in the economy on the basis of this initial deposit so this point the number of times the money supply gets increased is the money multiplier we will understand the formula to calculate money multiplier what is the money multiplier process in detail what factors influence the money multiplier in detail everything in detail so that you the concept of money multiplier becomes quite crystal clear to you so now we will here concert and on the meaning of money multiplier it is a concept which is used in monetary economics money multiplier is used to describe the relationship between central bank's monetary base that is reserves and the money supply in an economy money multiplier is also known as monetary multiplier or credit multiplier now this is the definition the money multiplier represents the factor by which an initial deposit can be multiplied to determine the potential increase in the money supply that is how many times the money supply increases on the basis of initial deposit this is told to us by the money multiplier now the topic before us is computing the money multiplier we have already learnt that money multiplier represents the factor by which the initial deposit can be multiplied to arrive at the money supply in the economy so now the money multiplier is typically typically means generally a number between 1 and 1 and 10 but it can vary depending on the reserve requirements set by the central bank and the behavior of banks now what is the formula for calculating the money multiplier money multiplier is obtained by this formula one hour reserve requirement ratio what is the reserve requirement ratio reserve requirement ratio is the reserve ratio set by the central bank suppose we deposit one thousand dollars in the bank you all of us know that the central bank have two basic functions first to accept deposits and the second is to give loans when this function first function has been done that is the deposit has been obtained then the banks cannot give all this amount on loan because as per the directions of the central bank the commercial banks have to keep certain percentage of the deposits as reserves that is in cash or as deposit with the central bank normally the cash reserve normally the reserve ratio is 10 percent of the deposits so the banks can say give 900 dollars after keeping 100 dollars as reserve they give 900 dollars as loan so this is the reserve requirement 10 percent which is set by the central bank suppose reserve ratio is 20 percent so here we can calculate the money multiplier 
एज वन आवर रिजर्व रेशो दैट इज वन आवर ट्वेंटी परसेंट वेन वी आर राइटिंग ट्वेंटी परसेंट इट मीन्स दैट हंड्रेड कम्स अब एंड ट्वेंटी बिलो सो द आंसर इज फाइव इन द सेम वे इफ वी से दैट द रिजर्व रेशो इज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इन दैट केस इट बिकम्स वन ओवर ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट और इन अदर वर्ड्स वन हंड्रेड ओवर ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड द मनी मल्टीप्लायर कम्स टू फोर इन दिस वे वी कैन कैलकुलेट द मनी मल्टीप्लायर बाय दिस फार्मूला वन ओवर रिजर्व रेशो विच इज सेट बाय द सेंट्रल बैंक नाउ द टॉपिक बिफोर अस इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग बैंक्स कंट्रीब्यूशन टू द मनी मल्टीप्लायर बैंक्स प्ले ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द मनी मल्टीप्लायर प्रोसेस बैंक्स एक्ट एज इंटरमीडरीज बिटवीन द डिपोजिटर्स एंड बोरोड नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल अंडरस्टैंड the role of the banks in the money multiplier process with the help of an example as you know that banks have two main functions first is to accept deposits and the second is to give loans now we will understand the role of banks in the money multiplier process with the help of an example suppose we a person comes to a bank and deposits 1000 dollars now whether the banks keep all this money with themselves or they give all this money on loan to earn profit no the banks cannot do so that they give all this money of 1000 dollars as loan because if they suppose give 1000 dollars as loan suppose they give all this money as loan then what will happen suppose i go to bank i have deposited 1000 dollars now the bank has already given all this money as loan now the bank is not having any money with them so now when i will go to bank to ask for money whether they will have anything to give me in cash or otherwise no because they have lent out all the money on loan so to avoid this type of situation the central bank in each and every country has mandated or made it compulsory that commercial banks must have some reserve ratio that is they must keep aside some percentage of their deposits as the reserves which has to be in the shape of cash or as deposits with the central bank normally the reserve ratio is 10% so now this deposit of 1000 dollars has been received so we here assume that reserve ratio is 10% reserve ratio is 10% so after keeping 100 dollars in reserves the banks will give 900 dollars as a loan to say a person b so now for what purpose the b has taken loan taken the loan from the bank he may have to pay off some debt or he may buy some goods from some person or he may have to avail the services of some person now suppose this person again spends this money to buy the goods or services from c buys the goods and services from 
C. So this money, which is the nine hundred dollars, goes to C. Now person C has his account with say same bank or some another bank. So all this money gets deposited into same bank or some another bank. So this loan becomes a deposit for the same bank or for the another bank. In the same way, the said bank who receives this money as new deposits will again keep ten percent. That is ninety dollars. Ten percent of nine hundred dollars as reserves, and will give the balance. That is. Eight hundred and twelve dollars as loan. So this person C will again buy the goods or services from say person C to say person D, and D person will again deposit the said amount in his bank, which becomes a new deposit for another bank, and in this way again reserve ratio of ten percent will be kept. And in this way, the process goes on many a times. This is the money multiplier process. Initial deposit is only one thousand dollars, and here you can see that reserve ratio is there in each case. These are the deposits. Which are being created on the initial deposit, one thousand dollars. Here it is created. Here it is created. Here it will be again created as seven hundred and twenty-nine. Here again, seventy-two point nine dollars will be kept as reserve, and this process will go on. So on the initial deposit of say only one thousand dollars, the money supply. Will increase many a times. This is the whole process is money multiplier process. Money supply in the economy increases many fold through the banks. So now we will understand the role of banks in the money multiplier process in theory. Here is step by step explanation of how banks contribute to money multiplier process. First is Deposit creation. Individuals deposit money in the banks. Banks are required to hold a fraction of these deposits due to fractional reserve banking. As reserves, the remaining portion is known as excess reserves. Some portion of the deposits is kept as reserves, and the balance is known as excess reserves. In the earlier example. This part will be known as excess reserves. The banks lend out the excess reserves to borrowers, creating new new loans. And these new loans, when the borrowers make use of these loans to make purchases or investments or pay debts, the money often ends up as deposits in other banks. This cycle of lending and redeposit again lending goes on, creating more loans and deposits. This cycle of deposit creation, lending, deposit continues, which multiplies the initial deposit, leading to a larger increase in the money supply. This phenomenon is known as money multiplier effect. One question may come to our mind: whether on the in initial deposit of say one thousand dollars, whether the money supply can in increase by say one million dollars? No, it cannot happen. So. Money multiplier process is not an 
indefinite process no it is not so the money supply in the economy will increase only to the extent of money multiplier and the money multiplier depends on one hour reserve ratio that is if the reserve requirement is 10 percent then the money multiplier will be 10 that is on the initial deposit of 1000 dollars the total money supply will increase by 1000 into 10 that there is total money supply will be 10000 dollars now the topic before us is the interplay of reserve requirement and money multiplier the question is if there is change in the reserve requirement what effect it will have on the money multiplier the answer is there is inverse relationship between reserve requirement and money multiplier what is the reserve requirement reserve requirement is the reserves which the bank which the banks have to keep in the shape of cash or as deposits with central bank as mandated by the central bank the relationship between the reserve ratio and the money multiplier is shown mathematically here money multiplier is equal to one hour reserve requirement ratio so now we will understand the effect of change in reserve ratio on the money multiplier with the help of an example suppose the reserve ratio is initially 10 percent so here the money multiplier is 1 over reserve ratio 1 over 10 percent 10 percent means 100 over 10 so it comes is equal to 10 suppose the reserve ratio is increased to 20 percent so it becomes 1 over 20 percent in other words 100 over 20 and the answer comes 5 so you will here observe that if the reserve ratio is increased from 10 to 20 the money multiplier decreases from 10 to 5 so as we increase reserve ratio money multiplier decreases we can also say that if reserve ratio is decreased from 20 to 10 the money multiplier increases from 5 to 10 so in this example which is given above you will realize that here the reserve requirement has been increased and there has been 50 percent reduction in the potential expansion of money supply with a higher reserve requirement the banks are required to hold more reserves what is this suppose bank is having one thousand dollars as deposits suppose reserve requirement is ten percent so the banks have to keep hundred dollars as reserves and they will be in a position to give 900 dollars on loan so if the reserve requirement ratio is increased to 20 percent so the banks will have to keep 200 dollars as reserves and they will be in a position to give only 800 dollars as loans so the increase in the reserve requirement leaves less money available to banks for lending and subsequent deposit creation you will see here that when the reserve requirement has been increased 
फ्रॉम टेन टू ट्वेंटी द अमाउंट अवेलेबल फॉर the banks for giving the same on loan decreases higher reserve reserve ratio the lower the money multiplier lower the reserve requirement the higher the money multiplier now here we are having a question calculate the total deposits created if the initial deposit is 1000 and reserve ratio is 20% we know that money multiplier is equal to 1 over reserve ratio so here money multiplier is equal to 1 over 20% in other words 100 over 20 and the money multiplier comes 5 so here we are having initial deposit as 1000 dollars so the total deposits is equal to initial deposit into money multiplier initial deposit 1000 dollars money multiplier is 5 so the total deposits are 5000 dollars so here there is again one question if total deposits created by commercial banks is 40000 dollars so total deposits in this question are rupees Forty thousand LRR is that is the legal required ratio. It is twenty five percent. So here we know that the formula of money multiplier is equal to one over reserve ratio. Here one over twenty five percent. In other words. Hundred over twenty five, and the money multiplier comes four in this question. So here, the total deposits have been given to us. We know that total deposits is equal to initial deposit. Into money multiplier. Initial deposits are not known to us. Total deposits are forty thousand rupees. Initial deposit is not known to us. Money multiplier is four. So initial deposit is forty thousand divided by four, and it comes to. Ten thousand rupees. Initial deposit is ten thousand rupees. We hope the questions are quite clear to you, because here we have only used the formula of money multiplier, one over reserve ratio, and on the basis of the same, you can calculate the total deposits or initial deposits accordingly. Now the topic before us is. unpacking assumptions of money multiplier the money multiplier formula what is the money multiplier formula we have already learnt that the money multiplier formula is 1 over reserve ratio this is the money multiplier formula this formula is based on some certain simplifying assumptions what are those assumptions these assumptions are banks fully keep their excess reserves to make new loans what it means we will understand the same one by one suppose 100 dollars is deposited in the bank 
now the banks have to obey the orders of central bank in each and every country suppose the central bank has mandated that each bank has to keep 10 percent as reserves so after keeping 10 percent that is 10 dollars the banks are left with 90 dollars so they can use 90 dollars as loans so this is the first assumption that the banks of will fully utilize excess reserves that is these are the excess reserves they will fully utilize these $90 as loans. They will give this amount as loans to another person. Now the second assumption, all loans get redeposited into the banking system. It means that the person whom, to whom the loan was given of say $90, he will use it to purchase certain goods to avail some services or to pay off some debts and he will spend all the money and all this money will get redeposited into the banking system that is it will again banking come into the banking system that is the person receiving the loan amount will spend it and the person who receives that amount of 90 dollars will deposit the same back into his own bank now the third assumption is reserve requirements ratios remain constant that is this reserve requirement will always remain constant if it is fixed 10 percent it will remain so so these are the three requirements first is excess reserves will be used fully used to make new loans and the second is all loans will get read posted into the banking system and reserve ratio will not change however these assumptions may not always hold true in the real world banking system because it may be possible that banks may not give all this amount as loan Nine, they will not give fully 90 dollars as loan it may be also possible that when the person who receives the loan of 90 dollars when he spends the same the other person who receives the same 90 dollars may not deposit full amount in the bank it may be possible that the person receiving this 90 dollars after selling his goods may deposit only 80 dollars in the bank it may be possible that he keeps 10 percent 10 dollars at his home in the home of cash and deposits only 80 dollars in the bank it is also possible that reserve bank changes the reserve requirement keeping in view the economic conditions in the country so these are the assumptions which on the basis of which this money multiplier formula that is the one hour reserve ratio is based we hope you have understood these assumptions in a very simple manner now the topic before us is a deep dive into determinants shaping the money multiplier we understand that we have a formula to calculate money multiplier what is that money multiplier is equal to one over reserve ratio the money multiplier effect will be fully effective if banks lend out all of their excess reserves it means that if we are having if the bank is having deposit of say one thousand dollars and the reserve ratio is say ten percent then the banks will keep hundred dollars as reserves and they will use the balance amount of nine hundred dollars as loans they will give they will give all this amount which is excess reserves 
as loans. They will give all this amount on loan. Further, all money created by the banking system remains within the banking system and is not withdrawn as currency. That is, when this amount is given as loan, this $900 again get redeposited into the banking system. When this amount is used for the purpose of say purchasing goods or availing services or paying debts, then the person receiving this amount deposits all this amount in the banking system and this money again becomes part of the banking system and no amount of this $900 is kept by the recipient as cash at home. That is all this money gets redeposited into the bank and no amount is kept aside as cash at home. However, such assumptions are not practical in the real world. It is also possible that reserve ratio may, reserve ratio which is set by the central bank may change which will also affect the money multiplier. In the real world, many factors influence or affect the money multiplier. First is reserve requirement, currency holding, yes. desire to hold excess reserves, demand for loans. We will discuss each and every point one by one. First is reserve requirement. We have already learnt that suppose if 1000 dollars is the deposit with the bank and reserve ratio is say 10 percent and then after keeping 100 dollars as reserve the bank will be in a position to give 900 dollars on loan suppose if the reserve requirement is changed what will happen if the reserve requirement is changed, then suppose it becomes 20 percent, then 200 dollars will be kept as reserves and this amount will be available for loans. So, when this 900, uh, we again come to the first point, when this 900 dollars is given as loan, this amount will be used by the person receiving for the purpose of say purchasing goods, availing services or paying back debts. This amount again gets deposited into the banking system and again keeping the reserves of 10 percent, it will be creating 810 dollars as loan. This is the first case. But if the reserve requirement is more, what will happen? If the reserve requirement is more, one will, what will happen? The banks will be in a position to give only $800 as loan and when this amount is spended by the recipient or the person receiving the loan, it will again get deposited into the banking system as deposit and after keeping 20% the balance amount of 640 will be available as loan in the second case. So, in the first case you will observe that when the reserve requirement was less, the loan was more. Here deposit was increasing on the higher side, but if the reserve requirement is set at higher point by the central bank, the loans are also on the lesser side which are being provided. So, when the reserve requirement is increased, it will adversely affect the money multiplier. Money supply in the economy will decrease. It will have adverse effect. As you know that formula for money multiplier is 1 over reserve requirement. Reserve requirement is changed suppose from if it is 20 percent it is 5 if it is say 25 percent the money multiplier will become 4 
So as the reserve requirement is changed, money multiplier is also changed. Now the second point, currency holding. If the person have the desire to keep more amount as cash, the less amount is deposited. Suppose the we are having one hundred dollars with us. There are two options. We deposit all this amount as in the bank, or it may be possible that we deposit only eight hundred dollars in the bank and keep two hundred dollars in cash at our home. So in this case, when hundred dollars. A one thousand dollars completely are deposited in the bank. It will result into higher multiplier, higher money multiplier, because the money supply will be based on this initial deposit. Here you can see that after keeping the reserve requirement, say ten percent, the banks will be in a position to give nine hundred dollars on loan. And there is a money multiplier process, as you have already learned. But here, if the banks receive only deposit of eight hundred dollars instead of one thousand dollars, then the banks will be in a position to give only seven hundred and twenty dollars on loan. So this amount will be available for loan. So if the currency holding is on the higher side. Here the currency holding was nil, zero. Here the currency holding is twenty percent. So if the currency holding increases, it will negatively affect the money multiplier process. Money multi, a money supply in the economy will decrease. It will adversely affect the money multiplier. Now we will come desire to hold excess reserves. We have already learnt that. Reserve requirement ratio is set by the central bank, and normally it is set at ten percent. However, it may change from country to country as it is decided by the central bank of the country, keeping in view the economic conditions of the country. Suppose we assume that it is ten percent. Suppose deposits are one thousand dollars with the bank, and the banks have. Legally, they have to keep ten percent as reserves. That is one hundred dollars as reserves, and they can give nine hundred dollars as loan. They can, but if the banks decide that they should keep some more amount as reserves, that is instead of this legal legally binded reserve ratio, they may opt for say fifteen percent. As reserves, keeping in with the economic conditions, economic uncertainties, the bank may decide that it will keep more amount as reserves, and it will give only eight hundred and fifty dollars as loans. So here it will adversely affect the money multiplier because money multiplier is based on one over reserve ratio. If it is Ten percent, the money multiplier is ten, because it becomes hundred over ten, and the money multiplier is ten. But if the money multiplier, if the reserve ratio is here, it is not the dictated reserve ratio of fifteen percent. Here, ten percent is the reserve ratio as set by the central bank, and five percent is the reserve ratio. Which the bank has paid for itself. So, if the reserve ratio becomes, if the reserve which has been decided to be kept aside as by the bank becomes fifteen percent, what will happen? It will become hundred over fifteen. So, you will observe that if the excess reserves are held by the bank. Then it will adversely affect the money multiplier. Now the other is demand for loans. Here we have already learnt that after keeping the reserve ratio, 
they can say give eight hundred dollars as loans. They have this amount as loan available. They can give banks can give this amount as loan. But if the market conditions are such that the borrowers that is the individuals or the businessmen are not coming forward to avail the loan then it, it will adversely affect the money multiplier because the money supply in the market will decrease because when the persons will not come to avail loan the uh, reserves excess reserves will lie with the bank without being utilized as loans now suppose in this competitive world we are also using online sites to purchase products from overseas suppose if a person uses some of money to buy a product online that was manufactured in a foreign market in such a case what will happen the purchase money will go out of the nation and the economy it will also adversely affect the multiplier effect now we have discussed many factors which influence the money multiplier these determinants influence how much money banks can create through the lending process affecting the overall money multiplier in the economy thanks for watching if you like our course please spare some time to give a star rating to our course